Hey guys, today we're going to teach this robot how to balance a pole on his head. This is the problem that we're trying to solve. It's called cart pole. It's a cart, this black box, balancing a pole on top of it. I swapped out the cart with the robot just to make things a little bit more interesting. But for the purpose of this tutorial, don't worry about the robot. In order to balance the pole, a robot can move along the X axis. This is the position of the robot. It can move either to the left or to the right at a certain velocity. We also get the angle of the pole. The pole can be falling to either side. And finally, we also get the angular velocity of the falling pole. Now, in order to construct a cue table, we know the actions are either left or right. To represent the states, we need a combination of the position, velocity, angle, and angular velocity. I want to also mention that if the robot goes out of a certain range, the game is over. Same thing with the pole. If the pole falls to a certain angle, the game is also over. These four attributes are floating point numbers, which means we can have an infinite number of combinations. Of course, we can't represent an infinite number of combinations in the Q table. The way we solve this, take position for example, is by dividing up the x-axis into segments. So if the robot goes out of range, we say it's in position 0. If it's in this range, we say it's in position 1, and so on. Similarly with angle, we chop it up, and we do the same with the velocity range and the angular velocity range as well. After calculating the Q value, let's say it's 0.1 and 0.2, the largest Q value is going to tell the robot what to do in this state combination, which is to go to the right. Our starting point is the solution for the mountain car problem from the last video. If you haven't seen it yet, please go check it out. It will make it easier for you to follow this one. I'm going to make a copy of the code, rename it to Cotpo, grab the environment name. For you, this is the environment. For me, I'm going to load my custom one. Let me register the custom environment. Again, you don't have to worry about this. In mountain car, we only had a position and velocity. Now we need to replace this with those four attributes. I'm hard coding the ranges just to make it easy. I'm dividing up all the ranges into 10 segments. The number of segments is something that you can play with. If you have too many, then it's going to require a lot more training, a lot more memory. If you don't have enough segments, you might not be able to solve the problem. These numbers are from the specification. The car position is actually from negative 4.8 to 4.8. But as mentioned down here, the game is over at negative 2.4 to 2.4. Same thing with the angle. The angle is actually 0.4 but the game is over at 0.2. For position and angle, I'm using the range where the game is still alive. Now for the cart velocity and the pole velocity, you can see that it's defined as infinite. Obviously we can't divide infinite into segments. What I did was run the game and print out the max velocity and max angular velocity. It seems to go in the range of minus four to four. And so that's how I got those numbers. Now initialize the Q table. The Q table is going to be a 11 by 11 by 11 by 11 by 2 array. Now even though we made 10 segments, the Q table actually requires 11. Here's an example. So let's say we use the linspace function to divide up the range of 1 to 3 into 3 segments. Linspace is going to give me an array of 1, 2, and 3. So the range of one to three divide up evenly into three segments. Now, when I use the digitize function to map, say, position into the Q table, my first index is gonna be everything that's less than or equal to one. My second index is everything between one or greater than one to less than or equal to two. My second index is gonna be greater than two, less than or equal to three. And my third index is everything greater than three. That's why I need to do a plus one on the size of the array returned by lens space. Now I'll change whatever reference to mountain car. Next, I'm going to decrease the learning rate and increase the discount factor. 
I'm going to make the decay rate into 0 0.001. These are parameters that need some trial and error to find the best combination. I found these to work for this scenario. I'm going to change the rewards per episode to a dynamic array. I also want to keep track of the maximum reward obtained. Instead of running to a specific number of episodes, I'm going to take a different approach. I'll keep track of the episodes taken using I. I want to keep the training going until the robot is able to balance the pole. I'm going to add that condition in a second. Here where we're converting the floating point position and velocity, I'm going to add the other attributes. Mountain car had a negative penalty. For this scenario, we get a reward for as long as we can keep the pole balanced. We might get to a point where the pole can balance forever and the loop will never end. So I'm just putting a 10,000 limit here. So the run will actually end. Choosing a random action to perform stays the same. I'm just going to update the comment. Choosing the best action also stays the same, except I'll add angle and angular velocity as well. Taking an action and then getting the new state back stays the same. Again, I'm just adding the angle and angular velocity. And I'll update the Q function to include those two attributes as well. Keeping track of the new state. I also want to calculate the average reward in the last 100 episodes. The requirement for passing this environment is that the robot can balance the pole for at least 495 steps. I would like to see if it can train to balance the pole forever. So if the average reward in the last 100 episodes is a, more than a thousand, then we can probably stop training. Get rid of this one. Keep track of how many episodes we've ran. I'm going to print out some stats for every 100 episodes, just so I can see what's happening in the background. I actually need to decrease the decay rate. I think we need to train a lot of episodes. Now we don't need to pass in the episodes now, it's going to keep running until it learns how to balance the pole. I guess we don't need to keep track of max reward. Now we're ready to go. So it's not very apparent, but every time the pole reaches about 12 degrees either side, it's game over. By taking random actions, the episode ends in uh, less than a second. Okay, let's stop this. Turn off rendering and start training again. You can see how fast it went through 10,000 episodes. Epsilon is about 80 something percent. The robot's able to balance, well, not really able to balance at all. Epsilon is down to about 35% and we're getting near the 200s. Epsilon is at 15%, we're getting 4 to 500. Remember that training stops when we get an average of 1,000 rewards in 100 episodes. They didn't print the last episode, but I believe we got 1,000 average reward. Now let's see if it works. Turn off training, turn on rendering. Let's see if it balances. Before we kick this off, let's print out the episode number and the uh, reward every 100 steps. Okay, there we go. All right, this is still the first episode. It's accumulating rewards. I'm going to speed things up. It's looking like the pole is not going to fall. It took over 90,000 episodes to train the robot. I'm sure if you tweak some of the parameters yourself, you might be able to get better results. Okay, I think we're good here. If you learned something today, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Catch you next time.